Hi, it's Paul Scott here on Wednesday 3rd of June 2015. Small cap value report for today is now published. I covered Cambridge Cognition, a company I met last night, um, Sprue Aegis, AGM Statement and Caffins, the car dealership. I should add I'm, I'm a little bit hungover today because um, I ended up drinking far too many beers at the Cambridge Cognition meeting last night, so apologies in advance of today's um, video is a bit subdued. First stock I want to look at is Seeing Machines. This is an Australian company that makes uh, equipment for to de detect and sound an alarm for driver fatigue in any type of um, vehicle. Quite interesting today, they've had their first order for the new fleet product. Uh, it's for 750 units, it doesn't give a value. Uh, from memory I think they were about a thousand dollars or a thousand pounds each or something so it's not hugely material but the interesting thing is it's from an insurance company here we are IUM is a leading South African insurance underwriter um, so this dangles the prospect of seeing machines products actually being mandated by uh, insurers at some point global market I mean it could be absolutely massive couldn't it but um, this is the first order of the fleet product. Uh, I, I think it's potentially interesting, this, this stock. It's speculative. Uh, let's see what the value is. Uh, see machines. I've, I'm a bit of a sucker for story stocks. I try to avoid them, and, uh, but when I do buy them, um, yeah, it's up 9% today, but the bid, bid offer spread's quite bad at the moment. It's 4.5p at 5p. Um, 41 million market cap last night, so they'll be up to about 45 million now. Very low stock rank, um, obviously a highly speculative share, but they have got a real product and it does work. So I think that one's um, worth a look. I should add that I do hold shares in that company. Next, let's look at Globo, one of my least favorite companies, as people might know. Um, now, there was an announcement from them today. Here we are, a Q2 trading update. Um, they always report revenues up. Uh, the, the breakdown is interesting here though in that the this Citroen Go Go social product um, was only 2% year on year growth so that seems to be stagnant that product. Um, this telecom and software as a service revenue is, is immaterial but the big item is this Go Enterprise um, product which apparently allows um, smartphones to run um, you, you know you run your office spreadsheets and things on your smartphone and keep it all secure well, that's quite impressive uh, a very impressive year on year turnover growth there so I think that, that, that there's something there with Globo I think but um, uh, so it's not one I think I would want to short um, but you know they quote this EBITDA number it's absolute nonsense because they just capitalize uh, most of their development costs into intangibles. So if you look at the free cash flow, it's it's very very small, 1.8 million euros for the quarter. But at least it's positive, I suppose. Uh, the cash generated figure is nonsense again because that ignores uh, intangibles. They've got this net cash now. I mean, my main problems with this company. Let's go back to my last report on it. Clicking on the discuss tab. Here we are. Uh, oh no, yeah, there it is, 30th of April. I detailed specifically what I don't like about this company. Um, I've got a rather poor internet connection here, so some of the pictures haven't come through right. Where is it? Uh, I think I must have written War and Peace on this particular day. Good grief. Here we are, Globo. So, my specific problems with Globo are that the EBITDA numbers nonsense as I've mentioned so they're putting all the costs into into intangible assets um, that's number one the cash flow statement sorry we've got the scaffolders in outside there park them van right next to me here so that's what the crashing is uh, now this is one why is a company with substantial net cash paying substantial interest payments of 4.1 million euros it doesn't make sense. They've got this big cash pile, supposedly, but they're taking out fresh borrowings of 30 million euros in the year. doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, I think that's very, very odd, as I've said there. 
Now, Roger Lawson has gone to the company and asked him asked for reassurance on all these points, and of course they've given it to him. That's what happens if you want seek reassurance from companies. They tell you whatever what they you know what they want you to to to, to hear. Um, so, uh, two change of auditors as well in rapid succession with Globo is another massive um, red flag. It's an overseas company on AIM, that in itself is a huge red, red flag. The balance sheet is full of nasties. Um, the receivables are, are far too high. Um, I think there are probably a lot of bad debts sitting in those debtor figures that will need to be recognised at some point. So all the nasties um, are still there. Debtor days is way too high. Um, I don't accept any explanation for why. What's that? Oh. I don't expect any explanation for why debtors are too high. If they're too high, there's nearly always a problem. So all my specific problems with Globo are in this post on the 30th of April. I haven't had satisfactory explanations about any of them. Right, uh, but on the other hand, you know, there does seem to be something with uh, th this Go Enterprise product. So um, it's not one I would want to short, but I certainly wouldn't be paying, um, what is it, 207 million market cap. I think that's ridiculous um, for this company that doesn't really generate very much real profit at all. Um, if you look at free cash flow here, I mean, it's it, it, it's negligible, really. So that's Globo, and they're doing this ADR program as well in America, which, again, I think is ridiculous. So that's that one. Now, um, Advanced Onca Watsits, as I call it, because I can never remember the company name. Here we are, Advanced Onca Therapy, ticket AVO. This is a, a speculative one as well. Uh, but I, I bought into this recently um, because they have um, done a placing, so they're funded up. I think it was at 8p. They raised 20 million. Here we are, yeah. And they got this light system with what seemed to be firm orders for a very, very complex um, cancer treatment uh, machinery, which um, it does look very exciting. And they've got, I think, something like seven either orders or uh, letters of intent or something. Um, and the margins on it are, are supposedly very good. I saw a presentation from management um, which got me interested. I, I shouldn't buy into these story stocks, but I couldn't resist this one. What's the market cap on it? I can't remember. Uh, oh, it's, God, it's huge. 135 million. Hmm. Yeah, oh well. Um, well, anyway, their results today... Uh, don't really matter particularly because it's obviously loss making at the moment. Um, where are the figures? I think it was about a five million loss, six million, something like that. But they've got 20 million quid in cash in the bank, so you know, I'll, I'll let it run for a year or something and see what happens. It'll probably be a disaster because it's most story stocks are, uh, but you never know, the odd one does work. Now, uh, right, two minutes left. Rapid Cloud International. I had a quick look at this, then I saw that it was, um, I think, based in Malaysia or something, and listed on AIM, and has about an eight million market cap. So, you know, I'm just not interested. Basically, um, I did have a quick look at the numbers, though, and the pr yeah, eight million yesterday, down thirteen percent today. So about seven million market cap. Uh, the the debtors' figures looked far too high on this. Um, oh no, it's the wrong wrong account. Here we are. Um, yeah, basically on the balance sheet, debtors are far far too high. They are trade 11.1 million trade receivables. We'll compare that with turnover for the year of only 17.8. So most of the year's turnover has actually just gone into debtors. Well, that is a massive red flag. Also, 31st of December 2014 numbers being published on the bloody 3rd of June. I mean, that, again, massive red flag, um, late reporting. I just wouldn't touch it with a barge bomb. Overseas stocks on AIM, forget it. Nearly all of them are rubbish. Um, Easy Hotels, uh, EZH. This was, I think, a float last year. Uh, interim results today. Now look, they say profit before tax, excluding corporate office expenses, up 122% to 1.35 million. Sounds great, but you can't just exclude your, your, your head office costs. 
if you look at the actual PL, I think it's always best to skip the bullet points and go straight to the PL. They've used a very small font. Let's see if I can enlarge that. Hang on. There we are. Right. So um, it's a franchise hotel network predominantly, I think. So you've got the system sales of 9 million and then Easy Hotels Cut is 2.6 million here. I think they operate one or two hotels of their own as well. Uh, the franchise model is quite um, established in the hotel space. There are a number, I think, what, what's that one? Um, Holiday Inn, I think, is a franchise chain. There are quite a few, so it does seem to work. But look at how the numbers gradually get smaller and smaller. Operating profit 600k. This is only for six months, remember. Uh, the dreaded EBITDA there, less your depreciation. A hefty finance expense, so it's got quite a bit of debt. So you're only down to 365k at the profit before tax level. Less a bit of tax, and you know, a quarter of a million pound earnings, barely different from last year for six months. Say half a million earnings for, for a full year. And what's the market cap of it? Um, EZH. My connection is a bit slow today. Oh, that's come up. 50 million market cap yesterday. So that's a PE of about a hundred times the current run rate um, of 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 earnings, which is which is crazy. They're down eight percent today. Um, I think this this is this is uh, not worth even considering this stock. I looked at it when um, they did their initial IPO, and I thought it was a lot of hot air. I think it's it's one of these things where you get a celebrity type businessman like Stelios, you know, thinking they can wave their magic wand, a bit like Richard Branson or Philip Green, they think they can sort of wave their magic wand at any business and it will be a rip roaring success. Doesn't doesn't work like that. Uh, they only just got this float away as well. I think Stelios had to um, amend the terms of it at the last minute. So I don't think it's much cop this one and I wouldn't bother with it. Okay, uh, sorry, all a bit negative today isn't it, but never mind. Quick look at the top risers and fallers. I like this thing on ADVFN because it gives you the a little chart and a link to the to the um, news f for the day, which is very useful. So Rapid Cloud, you can see, has dropped on re results there. The rest of these, I don't really follow any of these. So it's usually just a collection of uh, resource stocks. Oh, I see C Energy is down another 10% today after yesterday's fall. That's going nowhere, I think. At the moment, um, what else have we got? Oh, yeah, tungsten's down again. You see, down to 73 and three quarters, so below the ATP placing price. Most of the rest of these things are, are resource stocks. I wish there was a button you could just press that would be exclude resource sector. Um, they, they clutter everything up, don't they? What have we got on the risers here? I don't know any of these. Um, no, I don't know. Oh, Blur Group's up 48 out of 23 percent. Well, I never. God, we really are in a bull market, aren't we? Try the chain tech. That one's awful as well. Um, the accounts for that, I'm pretty sure, are, 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 are a work of fiction. Uh, what else is there there? Westminster don't like that one. Sigma Capital, I'm told, is very interesting. Uh, I need to do some research on that one some deal to build 10,000 houses for a buy to let um, what else have we got here I think that's pretty much it real good food I, I didn't comment on them the other day but actually their pro forma balance sheet since they've got rid of um, Napier Brown is actually quite good now so that was on my barge pole list but I took it off when they got the cash they got net cash now amazingly enough and they're seeing machines it did a funny little dip intraday is back up now Okay, I'll leave it there. I've run over time. Um, see you tomorrow. Bye.